Hey guys, Madison here. The reaction you're about to see was filmed back in 2021 during a time when I was not uploading videos to YouTube. Long story. But due to popular demand, I've decided to start uploading those reactions here on YouTube in special From the Vault Fridays. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, Madison here, and today I'm going to be watching the classic film Casablanca. I actually had never even considered like putting this movie on a poll until when was it? It probably was a couple of months ago now. My cousin was actually over at my house and uh, Casablanca is her favorite movie and she was like, Madison, you have to watch Casablanca. You have to put it on a poll. And I was like, okay. Um, so then I like, I put it on my list and I was waiting for the right time. Spooky movie month came along and then you know, it was, it was scary movies, nothing but scary movies. And so now that October is over and I'm going into November, I was like, okay, I was ready to just put like, I don't know if wholesome is the right word. I just wanted to put things that are really the opposite in a lot of ways of scary movies on my poll this week, <laughs> in case you can't tell. No jump scares this week, hopefully no, um creepy psychopaths or <laughs> that sort of thing, or ghosts even, none of that, just a good solid classic that somehow I've never gotten around to watching. There are a lot of classics actually because I'm so young that I never got around to watching just because they were way before my time. Um, like I haven't seen The Sound of Music, I haven't seen Gone with the Wind, I had, there's a lot of classics that I somehow have never seen. But I'm looking forward to hopefully starting to watch more of those classics now that I'm reacting to movies and I can react to them and watch them with people who maybe have loved them for years. So I'm looking forward to watching this movie and finding out what it's all about and how this romantic drama is going to play out. So without further ado, guys, let's watch Casablanca. Many eyes in imprisoned Europe turned hopefully or desperately toward the freedom of the Americas. Here, the fortunate ones, through money or influence or luck, might obtain exit visas and scurry to Lisbon. Two German couriers carrying important official documents murdered on train from Oran. Murderer and possible accomplices headed for Casablanca. These papers expired three weeks ago. You have to come along. Halt! Halt! Uh-oh. <laughs> Watch yourself. Be on guard. This place is full of vultures, vultures everywhere. Oh, how silly of me. Oh, dear. I left my wallet in the hotel. Oh, I... Uh, he probably took your wallet. <laughs> Didn't he reach over to his pocket? Thank you, Captain. It's very good to be here. Major Strasser, my aide, Lieutenant Cassell. Captain Donnelli, the Italian staff is at your very command, Major. of you. You may find the climate of Casablanca a trifle warm, Major. Tonight he'll be at Ricks. Everybody comes to Ricks. I have already heard about this cafe and also about Mr. Rick himself. Cafe American. This is certainly a clash of cultures going on here. Oh, nobody else. Give me a thrill, honey, with all your balls. I love you still. Have to be you. Wonderful you. Will you ask Rick if he have a drink with us? Madame, he never drinks with customers. Never. I have never seen it. What makes salon keepers so snobbish? Your cash is good at the bar. What? Do you know who I am? I do. You're lucky the bar's open to you. This is outrageous. <laughs> you know, Rick watching. So was that French guy like kind of allied with the Germans and the Deutsche Bank, they said? You are a very cynical person, Rick. If, if, if you forgive me for saying so. I forgive you. Thank you. Will you have a drink with me, please? No. Oh, I forgot you never drink with me. I'll have another, please. You despise me, don't you? Well, if I gave you any thought, I probably would. But why? I provide them with exit visas. For a price, Ugarty. For a price. <laughs> Letters of Transit, signed by General Vigon. Cannot be rescinded, not even questioned. Oh, I don't want them here overnight. Mm, don't be afraid of that. Please keep them for me. Thank you. I knew I could trust you. Oh, wait, uh, I'll be expecting some people. If uh, yeah, I heard a rumor those two German couriers were carrying letters of transit. I've heard that rumor too. 
poor devils. Mm. Hey, who's got trouble? We got trouble. How much trouble? Too much trouble. Well, now, don't you bow. He has a wonderful voice. We're unlucky. How unlucky? Just let those in the piano. Who is that? Don't knock on the piano wood, though. <laughs> what do you want for Sam? I don't buy or sell human beings. Too bad that's Casablanca's leading commodity. Oh, I like it fine, yeah. You'll double what I pay you. Yeah, but I ain't got time to spend the money I make here. Sorry. <laughs> Wise choice. I can tell that man's a pig already. Will I see you tonight? I never make plans that far ahead. <laughs> Give me another. Sasha, she's had enough. Don't listen to him, Sasha. What do you think you are pushing me around? What a fool I was to fall for a man like you. I go with her, Sasha, and be sure she gets home. Yes, boss. And come right back. Angry girlfriend. I've often speculated on why you don't return to America. I like to think that you killed a man. It's the romantic in me. It's a combination of all three. Tonight, we're going to make an arrest in your cafe. Not again? Oh, this is no ordinary arrest. A murderer, no less. You cannot possibly escape. I'd stick my neck out for nobody. <laughs> There is a man arrived in Casablanca on his way to America. He will offer a fortune to anyone who will furnish him with an exit visa. Well, what's his name? Victor Laszlo. Escaped from a concentration camp. The Nazis have been chasing him all over Europe. This is the end of the chase. 20,000 francs says it isn't. Make it 10. I'm only a poor, corrupt official. He is traveling with a lady. He'll take one. I think not. I've seen the lady. And if he did not leave her in Marseille or in Iran, in 1935, you ran guns to Ethiopia. In 1936, you fought in Spain on the loyalist side. I got well paid for it on both occasions. In Casablanca, I am master of my fate. I am Major Captain... Major Strasser is here, sir. I am captain of my soul. Invictus, right? Sierra oh. Ugarty. La partie continue. Yes. Will you please come with us? Certainly. Oh, no. <laughs> How did he just manage that? When they come to get me, Rick, I hope you'll be more of a help. I stick my neck out for nobody. Pay yourselves, all right, Sam? Okay, oh, that poor guy. What is your nationality? I'm a drunkard. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes Rick a citizen of the world. Richard Blaine, American, age 37, cannot return to his country. The reason is a little vague. We also know what you did in Paris, Mr. Blaine. Oh, my eyes really brown. You will forgive my curiosity, Mr. Blaine. The point is... He's very smart. Very, very sharp-witted man. I reserve the table. Victor Laszlo. Yes, Monsieur Laszlo. Right this way. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Monsieur Laszlo, is it not? Yes. I am Captain Renault, Prefect of Police. Yes, what is it you want? Merely to welcome you to Casablanca and to wish you a pleasant stay. May I present Miss Ilzalant? I was informed you were the most beautiful woman ever to visit Casablanca. That was a gross understatement. You're very kind. The boy was playing the piano. Somewhere I've seen him. Sam? Yes. He came from Paris with Rick. Mademoiselle, you're in Rick's. So they're not married. She's just traveling with him. We've been in difficult places before, haven't we? But they're, yeah, they're definitely involved with each other, but he said she had a lot different last name, right? We're gonna have ourselves a love triangle. <laughs> Ugarte cannot even help himself to see it. He's under arrest for murder. Mm -hmm. Where is Rick? He has mysteriously disappeared. It's been a long time. Yes, ma'am. A lot of water under the bridge. Where is Rick? Uh, he went home. Did he? You must remember this And when two lovers woo On that you can rely Sam, I thought I told you never to play. Oh. Won't you join us for a drink? Oh, no, Rick. Thanks, I will. Well, the precedent is being broken. 
Let's see the last time we met. Was La Bella Roa. How nice you remembered. There's still nobody in the world who can play as time goes by like Sam. He hasn't played it in a long time. His world has just been turned upside down. <laughs> there was so much in that look when they first saw each other. So much history. There is nothing like two tortured lovers pining for each other. <laughs> I'm getting nervous already. I hope this has a happy ending. Boss. Yeah, he's wrecked. Boss, ain't you planning on going to bed in the near future? No. You ever going to bed? No. Well, I ain't sleepy either. <laughs> Good, then have a drink. I wonder why he can't go back to America. We met her in France. What a look, man. Oh. What did you do and what did you think, huh? We said no questions. Here's looking at you, kid. Why there is no other man in my life? Uh -huh. There was. He's dead. Sorry, Brad. Only one answer can take care of all our questions. Mm -hmm. I'll meet you at the station. All right, at a quarter to five. Say, why don't we get married, Marseille? <laughs> hey. Hey, what's wrong, kid? She didn't come to this. She didn't come to the station, does she? Is she afraid to fall in love again because she already lost someone? Or not afraid to fall in love, but afraid to commit fully, maybe? Where is she? Have you seen her? No, Miss Richard, I can't find her. She checked out of the hotel, but this note came just after you left. There might be another reason. I don't know what that is, but I think there might be. There's something else. Richard, dear, I'll go with you any place. We'll get on a train together and never stop. Don't drink. I can understand how you feel. Huh? Who was it you left me for? Was it Laszlo, or were there others in between? Aren't you the kind to tell? Oh man, the I angst. <laughs> the angst. Delighted to see you both. Did you have a good night's rest? Her outfits are so beautiful. I love them. Fashion icon. If you will furnish me with their names and their exact whereabouts, you will have your visa in the morning. And the honor of having served the Third Reich. If I didn't give them to you in a concentration camp, where you had more persuasive methods at your disposal, I certainly won't give them to you now. From every corner of Europe, hundreds, thousands would rise to take our places. Even Nazis can't kill that fast. Oh, Laszlo, you have a That's right. for eloquence. You would find the conversation a trifle one-sided. Senor Jogart is dead. I'm making out the report now. We haven't quite decided whether he committed suicide or die trying to escape and evil the next step will be to the black tyrannical party. people rick's gonna give her those papers isn't he that he, that he put in the piano he's gonna give there were two right he's gonna give one to her and one to laszlo and he's gonna have to stay behind oh no oh no i hope i'm wrong <sighs> i don't want them to be separated again And it would be the opposite of him having to leave without her. <sighs> Did you run out on me because you couldn't take it, because you knew what it would be like, hiding from the police, running away all the time? You see, Victor Laszlo is my husband. And was, even when I knew you in Paris. Mm. 
What? Are they really? We are only interested in two visas, Senora. Visas are don't be east. No, Victor, no. You two will want to discuss this. Excuse me. If I had to stay and there were only visa for one, would you take it? Yes, I would. I love you very much, Elsa. <laughs> Your secret will be safe with me. She's not wearing a ring. Are they like hiding the marriage? Or is she lying about the marriage? You know where they are? Not for sure, monsieur. I'll venture to guess that Ugati left those letters with Monsieur Rick. Rick. She's like, oh, great. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. I have to warn you, sir. I beseech you. This is a dangerous place full of vultures. Vultures everywhere. Thanks for everything. He's robbing everybody. <laughs> I'd like to see if he could rob a Nazi and get away with it. <laughs> have you got those letters of transit? Oh yeah, you pro Vichy or free French. <laughs> Serves me right for asking a direct question. Just Don't tell anyone. Where's your husband? At the roulette table. Trying to win enough for our exit visas. Oh, of course he's losing. Could you forgive her? Nobody ever loved me that much. And he never knew her. And the girl kept this bad thing locked in her heart. That would be all right, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. What is Ilsa hiding? What is she ashamed of, maybe? to connect to that girl's story. Not literally connected, but thematically connected. I'll have Sam play as time goes by. I believe that's your favorite tune. Thank you. Have you tried 22 tonight? I said 22. Leave it there. Cash it in and don't come back. Hmm. Are you sure this place is honest? Yeah, we all know he's a old softy underneath. There must be some reason why you won't let me have them. I suggest that you ask your wife. I beg your pardon? I said, ask your wife. We all know he's gonna cave. Yep. Play La Marseillaise. Play it. <laughs> I love it. I advise that this place be shut up at once. But everybody's having such a good time. Yes, much too good a time. The place is to be closed. But I've no excuse to close it. I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Everybody out at once. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mademoiselle, after this disturbance, it is not safe for Lazlo to stay in Casablanca. This morning you implied it was not safe for him to leave Casablanca. That is also too acceptable. Oh man, it's not looking good. Did he give any reason? He suggested I ask you. Ask me? Yes, he said, uh, ask your wife. When I was in a concentration camp, were you lonely in Paris? Yes, Victor. Is there anything you wish to tell me? <laughs> No, Victor, there isn't. Oh. I love you very much, my dear. Yes. Yes, I know. She didn't say I love you back. Right. She didn't say it back. Well, wow, so when he was at a concentration camp, she was cheating on him with Rick. Oh. I mean, I'm sure she thought he's never getting out of there. He's going to die in there, but still, like, <laughs> not a good look. I feel kind of bad for him now. He was probably, like, thinking of her and clinging to her as, like, you know, when I get out, I'll get to be with her again. And meanwhile, she's like, see ya. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it's, it's clear to me that she's in love with Rick and not this guy. And although she really admires Victor and respects him, it seems that she really loves Rick and obviously Rick loves her. So I'm rooting for them, but I also feel kind of bad about rooting for them. <laughs> the 
I know how you feel about me, but I'm asking you to put your feelings aside for something more important. Do I have to hear again what a great man your husband is? If you knew what really happened, if you only knew the truth. I wouldn't believe you no matter what you told me. You'd say anything now to get what you want. Now if you... All right. I tried to reason with you. Well... Put them on the table. Now. For the last time, put them on the table. All right, I'll make it easier for you. Go ahead and shoot. You'll be doing me a favor. I tried to stay away. I thought I would never see you again. How much I still love you. Oh. oh my gosh, guys, that scene was so good. <laughs> I was frantic. For months I tried to get word. Then it came. He was dead, shot, trying to escape. Oh, so she thought he was dead. Why weren't you honest with me? Why did you keep your marriage a secret? Well, it wasn't my secret, Richard. Victor wanted it that way. Not even our closest friends knew. But when did you first find out he was alive? Just before you and I were to leave Paris together, a friend came and told me that Victor was alive. How did they both come to the Oscars? Okay, so see, now I understand. I can empathize a lot more with that now. Two sides to every story. I know that I'll never have the strength to leave you again. But Laszlo? Oh, you'll help him now, Richard, won't you? Then he'll have his work, all that he's been living for. All except one. You have to think for both of us. For all of us. He's looking at you, kid. <laughs> I wish I didn't love you so much. Oh, man. <sighs> Don't you sometimes wonder if it's worth all this? I mean, what you're fighting for. You might as well question why we breathe. Stop breathing, we'll die. Since no one is to blame, I, I demand no explanation. I ask you as a favor to use the letters to take her away from Casablanca. You love her that much? Oh my gosh, they're both putting him in the worst position. Yes, I have the letters. I intend using them myself. I'm leaving Casablanca on tonight's plane, the last plane. Why are you still interested in what happens to Laszlo? I'm not, but I am interested in what happens to Ilza and me. I'll arrange to have Laszlo come there to pick up the letters of transit, and that'll give you the criminal grounds on which to make the arrest. You get him, and we get away. He's not telling the truth. He's not telling him his full plan. There's a catch. There's something. I just feel like he's going to sacrifice himself and let them both go. Guys. Everything. everything is quite all right. Corey. We'll tell him at the airport the last time to thank the easy for all of us. Victor Laszlo, you're under arrest. On a charge of accessory to the murder of the couriers from whom these letters were stolen. Love, it seems, has triumphed over virtue. Thank you. Not so fast, Louis. Nobody's going to be arrested, not for a while yet. There'll be two letters of transit for the Lisbon plane. There's to be no trouble about them. Oh dear. Oh no. <sighs> I'm stressed. <laughs> and the names are Mr. and Mrs. Victor Laszlo. But why my name, Richard? I knew it. The plane gets safely away. And to your last night, last night we said a great many things. I knew it. You said I was to do the thinking for both of us. Well, I've done a lot of it since then. It all adds up to one thing. If that plane leaves the ground and you're not with him, you'll regret it. It doesn't take much to see that the problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. He's looking at you, kid. <sighs> that was all over long ago. For your sake, she pretended it wasn't, and I let her pretend. I understand. Oh, my gosh. Interfere. I was willing to shoot Captain Renault and I'm willing to shoot you. Get me the radio tower. Put it down. He warned you. Wow. 
Well, well, Rick, you're not only a sentimentalist, but you've become a patriot. Maybe, but it seemed like a good time to start. I think perhaps you're right. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Guys, that broke my heart. Oh my gosh. I, I don't even know where to start. That was such a beautifully made film. Like, the script was so good. Like, I, I know, I mean, it was my first viewing, obviously, so I'm trying to, like, take in the characters, learn everybody's names, learn their backstories, all that, but at the same time, I was just so taken with, like, how clean and efficient the script was. Like, they dropped in all the right threads at the right places. They dropped little backstory bits at like all the right moments and they were just hitting beat after beat after beat so well. And slowly like, you know from the beginning, like they're setting Rick up as this like cold callous guy who's like, I don't get involved in the politics. I don't, I don't stick my neck out for anybody. He said that multiple times. So you know, like they're setting him up to where he's gonna stick his neck out for somebody. And then it ends up being this woman Ilsa that he loved back in Paris and her husband and he ends up doing you know all the things that he's like I don't do that you know we see that really he's not a cynic at heart he's got a heart of gold underneath that you know cold facade that stern exterior <laughs> and I love characters like that I absolutely love that archetype of I guess you would call it an anti-hero you know um there's definitely a trope of like male characters where it's like, you know, the, the cold, stern, I don't care about anything but myself. It's kind of almost like a Han Solo type. Um, or it's like, I don't care about anybody but myself. I'm just making my own way in the world, making my living, you know, I'm not going to risk myself for a cause or for any particular person. So it's always so satisfying when they do end up risking everything for someone they care about or a cause they care about. Oh my gosh, the love story. I got so caught up in the love story. It was so romantic and so beautiful. And at first I was like, man, so she was just cheating on her husband with him. But then when I found out, you know, she thought he was dead, I was like, suddenly it makes a lot more sense. And I feel even worse for her. Like that is a terrible situation she got stuck in. And honestly, like, I, I'm such an emotional person that like, I'm like, she should have stayed with him, you know, they could have run off together, you know, because he's making this deal with, what was his name? Was it Huey, Louis? I can't remember, the, the commander guy he was walking away with at the end. He's like making a deal, you know, to hopefully escape. Um, but it's like, I'm such a romantic that I'm like, I just, I don't care what the situation is. I just want them to run away together, you know? Like, I, I understand the logic of there's a way bigger cause at work here and, you know, way more lives at stake than just two. But I'm also like, she should do what she wants to do. Um, and her decision shouldn't be based on what Victor wants, if that makes any sense. I, I don't know. It's a really awkward situation because they're married. So yeah, she should stick by her husband, but it's also like she thought he was dead. So like, but it's also like a totally secret marriage that hardly anyone even knows about. It's, I could go around in circles on this because you're like, yes, she has a duty and a responsibility. She's married. So obviously it's the right thing for her to do is to stick with her husband. Um, and helping him with his cause. Yes, that's obviously very important, but it's like also he could probably do all the work he's doing without her. It's just if she wasn't there, that would take away his emotional support and part of his motivation and probably crush him in a lot of ways. So, <laughs> um, but the other part of me is like, she thought he was dead and she found true love. And like, it's like in the middle of the movie, at some point, you know, Victor said, I love you to her. And she was like, I know. And didn't say it back. And I'm like, so she doesn't even love him. Like, I I'm just always of the opinion, like, you know, they should be with the person that they love. But it was clear, like, when she saw him, when she saw Victor singing in the saloon, leading the charge in a way, she was looking at him with such admiration and respect. And you can tell she really does like him, admire him. I, does she love him? I don't know. 
why wouldn't she have answered him? You know, she said, I love you to Rick without hesitation. So it's just, it's really tragic. <laughs> it's really tragic. My heart is broken, but what a beautiful movie. The score was beautiful, wonderful performances all around. And again, the script, man, was just so, I don't even know what the word is I'm looking for. So just sharp and a lot of, you know, great themes it's dealing with. Um, you know, the fight for freedom, the fight against tyranny, how the everyday person can do that. Um, wow. Yeah, that was just a really, really good film. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be thinking about this all day because I just, oh man, the, the sacrifice Rick made for her. And I knew he was going to do that. I knew he was going to be like, you're getting on that plane and I'm staying behind. And it just, <sighs> There is just nothing better to me than a angst, you know, torture-filled romance. Although, of course, like I said, I prefer happy endings where they end up together. But there are some really great, tragic romances like this one. And, and it's not totally tragic because it's not like one or both of them died or something. It could be worse. See, Wuthering Heights. <laughs> That's another really tragic romance that I love. But yeah, I prefer happy endings. But when tragic sad endings are written very well I love those too so I mean this is a fantastic movie I can totally see why it's a classic um and I'm so glad I watched it so thank you to everyone who voted for it on the poll I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction and be sure to come back next week I think it'll be film Friday number 17 thanks again guys for watching I hope you enjoyed and see you then